We have not seen a golden frog in the wild since 2009. Lots of rumors, lots of rumors that they're there, um, but we have not. So the actual antelope is a techie. So the antelope is various, that's another population, and there's you know sightings here and there, um, but not big populations of them. But the golden frog, not even, not even individuals. We're trying to understand how different species recover after uh, very bad disease outbreaks. Uh, so we're working with multiple species in Panama because we have historic data tracking the disease spread through that part of Central America. And so we're focused on understanding what are the ways in which different populations are recovering after a very lethal disease outbreak. So we travel down to Panama two times per year, usually in the transition from wet to dry season or dry to wet season. And we're looking for amphibians who are normally coming out at that time of year for breeding. And so at that time, we are able to capture them and collect diagnostic samples that allow us to test for the fungal pathogen that is still in Panama. So we're working with a big team uh, across the country. So we have many different people across the United States as well as in Central America and South America. Um, my team right now, I have a couple of postdocs and multiple students who work in Panama and they come from different parts of Central and South America, um, but they are now here at UNR working for our team. So a normal day of research in Panama usually involves um, organizing all of our equipment to go out into the field. Uh, some of our sites are fairly remote, so it does take a while to access them. So we hike into streams in the rainforest, and that's where we will walk a transect where we're searching for amphibians along the stream side. And any amphibians that we find we, we capture by hand and we record their body temperature, their size, um, we take a diagnostic sample. We have three focal species that we want to, to sample, but also we're sampling all the species that we can find to detect BD. These focal species are famous. Lithobertes warsewishi, Colostidus panamensis, and Adelopus varius seteki. The frog is inside the bag, so first we check the mass with the bag and then with the outside bag of the frog. Uh, we measure the SBL, which is the snow stand length, so to, to know what is the size of the frog. And after that, yeah, we took the frog with gloves, the clean gloves. We have a swab. So, <laughs> so <laughs> with the swab, we have a standardized protocol to do the swabbing in the ventral side of the frog. That this protocol consists in five times for each toe, five times in each leg, then 10 times in the belly, and five times in each hand. hand. Oh, how is it? Feet. <laughs> <laughs> And then we've, when we've collected all the information that we need, then we release them to go back to their usual spot on the stream. We have learned that it's not the pathogen that has changed in the system, but rather that the amphibians seem to be fighting back 
with their uh, defenses, their immune systems. And so we're trying to now understand how is that working for so many different species because they all have slightly different immune responses to the infection. There are some species that are doing really well. Uh, so there's a species called Lithobates washawishii that is recovering much better than many of the other species in the area, um, particularly compared to the golden frog, which is still present, but it's very hard to find. And so we want to understand what is the difference between these two species, why has one recovered so well, and the other one is still struggling to recover from this disease outbreak. Son de la rana dorada, la ten este cráter con la selva sagrada en el valle de Anto. Canta la rana con ilusión, ahí suena la campana en Panamá con la atención. En este volcán hay una piedra tallada pidiendo conexión con la vida a tu alrededor, ranita. La rana dorada. So in 2005, I think this was just like a little idea with um, some zoos and maybe some academic researchers that there was a fungus coming and it was going to wipe out frogs. And so they just figured out there's certain frogs that were going to be wiped out. And the golden frog was already brought to the United States. And if it was going to be wiped out in Panama, there wasn't going to be any golden frogs in Panama. And since it's only from Panama, that seemed like maybe that's not the greatest idea. So the zoos and academics got together and everyone decided like, well, we'll have a little breeding facility in Panama. And it made sense to do it in El Valle because El Valle, first of all, it is a little bit more touristy town. And also it's kind of like the home of the golden frog. So it was first described from a site here in El Valle. So it's kind of, you know, the golden frog's home. And we also have this insurance colony, assurance colony for amphibians. Um, so they're most, the most endangered animals in the area, and we've taken and put in captivity, and we and breed so them. He, it's actually, it's called Hemifractus elioti. It's named after our son, since it's a new species. So the crown him tree frog, Anophica spinosa. So this is actually ossified, and they, fight, they use that crown to fight. But we have the hope for these yeah. amphibians, so we are finding some of them. So, yeah, some of them are recovery, so maybe all of them who do in one point. Yeah. We can have hope after the tragedy. <laughs> Suena la campana en Panamá, en esta volcana hay una piedra.